In today's video, we're diving into the ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. If you think this is just another boring blood test, think again. Stick around until the end to discover why this test is important and how to remember its details with ease. What's on the agenda? We'll cover four key points today. One, what is ESR? Two, factors affecting sedimentation rate. Three, causes of high and low ESR with an easy mnemonic. Four, clinical uses of ESR and CRP. Grab your notepad or just sit back and let the jokes and mnemonics do the heavy lifting. What is ESR? Let's start with the basics. ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate, measures how quickly red blood cells, RBs, settle to the bottom of a vertical tube over one hour. After one hour, the height of the sedimented RBCs is measured in millimeters per hour. Importantly, ESR is an indirect measure of the body's acute phase response, giving us clues about inflammation. Factors affecting ESR. Now, let's dig a little deeper, but I promise we won't get lost in the details. RBCs have a negative charge on their membranes, thanks to sialylated glycoproteins. This creates something called zeta potential, which prevents RBCs from clumping together. This zeta potential isn't just for show. It helps RBCs pass through normal blood vessels smoothly without sticking together. But when certain conditions disrupt this balance, the sedimentation rate changes. Here's how various factors affect ESR. 1. RBC count. In anemia, fewer RBCs mean less zeta potential. The RBCs sediment faster, elevating ESR. In polycythemia, more RBCs increase zeta potential, so ESR decreases. RBC size and shape. Larger RBCs, like in macrocytosis, are heavier and settle faster, increasing ESR. Conversely, smaller RBCs, microcytosis, or abnormal shapes, like in spherocytosis or sickle cell anemia, lower ESR. 3. Plasma proteins. Proteins like fibrinogen promote RBC clumping, RULO formation, making them heavier and speeding up sedimentation. Fibrinogen is elevated in inflammatory processes, infections, and malignancies. Similarly, immunoglobulins, especially IgM, increase ESR in conditions like multiple myeloma or Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Causes of high ESR, the mnemonic. Here comes the fun part, the mnemonic. ESR increases if an obese pregnant female having renal disease smokes cigarettes. Let's break it down. Inflammatory causes, it increases. Infections, the most common cause of elevated ESR. Inflammation includes both acute and chronic processes. Injury, ischemia, tissue damage like in myocardial infarction. Cancers, C, includes malignant neoplasms and paraproteinemias like multiple myeloma. Non-inflammatory causes of elevated ESR are covered with rest of the mnemonic. Let's get started. From letter I, it is increased age. Plasma proteins accumulate with age, increasing ESR. Correction formula for ESR for men, age in years divided by two. For women, age in years plus 10 divided by two. From Anne, it is anemia, less RBCs, less zeta potential, higher ESR. Third on the list is obesity. Adipose cells in obese secrete IL-6, which increases fibrinogen. Fourth is pregnancy. Hemodilution and relative anemia elevate ESR. On number fifth are females. Relative anemia and lower hemoglobin levels contribute to higher ESR compared to men. Sixth, from letter H, remember high room temperature, which increases RBC velocity, speeding up sedimentation. Next is renal disease. Conditions like end-stage renal disease, nephrotic syndrome, and peritoneal dialysis raise ESR. Note, hemodialysis does not affect ESR. Another one is smoking. Chronic inflammation from cigarette particulates increases ESR. From T, remember technical factors. Tilting the ESR tube speeds up sedimentation. Now let's flip the table and discuss causes of low ESR. High ESR cause inflammation. Anti-inflammatory drugs like high-dose steroids, high-dose salicylates, IL-6 inhibitors, and NSAIDs lower ESR. High ESR cause high fibrinogen states. In conditions like cancer and infections, ESR increases. Low fibrinogen levels, like in hypofibrinogenemia, decrease ESR. Older age raises ESR, but increased physical activity lowers it. Anemia causes high ESR, while polycythemia, more RBCs, increases zeta potential, lowering ESR. Macrocytosis increases ESR, while microcytosis, spherocytosis, and sickle cell disease lower ESR. High temperatures increase ESR, but low temperatures slow sedimentation. 
diabetes. Renal diseases increase ESR while heart failure lowers it. Smoking increases ESR, but light alcohol use lowers it. Tilting speeds up sedimentation, but a shorter ESR tube gives artificially lower readings. Clinical uses of ESR and CRP. Why do we care about ESR and its faster cousin, CRP? 1. Rheumatoid arthritis. ESR and CRP levels correlate with disease activity but don't diagnose it. 2. Polymyalgia rheumatica and giant cell arteritis. Both markers help with diagnosis and monitoring disease activity. 3. Lupus. Comparing ESR and CRP can differentiate between a lupus flare and an infection. Lupus flare, ESR rises more. Infection, CRP spikes significantly. High CRP correlates with risk for cardiovascular disease. 5. Chronic infections. ESR CRP monitor treatment response in conditions like osteomyelitis. Sometimes, both markers are used for prognosis. Elevated ESR CRP suggests a poor outlook in conditions like diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, uremia, and ischemic stroke. That's it. You made it through ESR 101. Congratulations. Got questions? Drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you faster than an RBC sedimenting in a tilted tube. Just kidding. Check out my other videos, including one on acute phase reactants. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because the only thing that should rise faster than ESR is your medical knowledge. See you in the next video. Keep learning and keep thriving.